Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and let's take a look at how I created the Unity short, What Lurks Beneath the Sinking Night, was made. So this one took me a little bit longer than the previous ones I'd made, simply because there was a bit more intricacy to it. There was more going on than the others, although it lasted the same amount of time, around about 44, 43 seconds. So much like the last one I did, I knew what the end goal was going to be, what was going to lurk beneath all of this. And if you've seen it, it ends up being some kind of monster that attacks you right at the end and cuts off. So I knew that was going to be the end point. And all it really is, is just this monster that basically runs an animation and basically attacks you. Uh, so if I re-enable it so we can see, that's all it is. Uh, you don't really get a proper glimpse of it, but that's down to the post-processing and that was how I intended it to be. I didn't want you to get a close and proper glimpse of what it looked like. I wanted you to be left thinking, what was that? So once again, like the last one, I kind of worked backwards, built the end result and built backwards from there. And we can see it doesn't look that impressive uh, in the form it's in right now. Again, it's the post-processing that does it all. If we come out of bounds and just have a look at the overall place, we can see that it, on the outside it is messy again. And the assets that I've used are all here. There's a lot more audio involved within this particular scene. So as I said, I built it backwards. I built this room, uh, sorted out what I needed to put the grit, grime, dirt on the floor, the rocks, the walls, the lights, the door. And at one point when we get to about here, when we're playing it, we hear a loud bang and we quickly face this way, and it would be this skeleton kind of banging on the door. Uh, this guy is standing up and he is merged into the floor, however, by the time we get to him, he's kind of dead on the floor, he's just a, a pile of bones lying there. Uh, that's simply because he starts his animation right there and finishes it on the floor. So, uh, the idea of what's going on here, uh, a little bit of inspiration came from this, uh, from Skyrim. Specifically when you go to the Thieves Guild and you basically, you know, push the thing and then the grave, as it were, opens and you go inside. A uh, chain that you see, but that's from the other side of the uh, Thieves Guild section. But either way, we pull that chain and then go in. Uh, so I kind of built it backwards to about here. And then I started at the beginning and built it forwards and joined up in the middle here. And we can see that generally lying around, we have bits and bobs everywhere to kind of give a bit more, not realism, but a bit more to the scene rather than just plain and empty. But once again, the post-processing is what really does it here. A uh, couple of different assets I've used. I got this decrepit dungeon one from the asset store. So I've used some assets from here, uh, some textures from other places. And generally everything within here is pretty much obtainable free. So everything within these shorts you could probably get for free. Um, but that's not to say that you don't have to pay for the assets if you wanted to, if you found something better. Um, I went a little bit over the top with the bloom in terms of the lighting, just because I wanted to give it a bit of something different. I didn't want it to appear massively real, but I didn't want it to appear bland and kind of boring as it is here. So I'm going to show you this section now. All this is, is just a bricked in kind of cube. Although it doesn't give that impression in the video itself, but it's just the way it is here. It's the way it's built. Uh, two kind of poles, well not poles really are they, they're um, columns there. And we can see all I've done in the hierarchy is group everything together. We have the outside and the floors and walls of the inside there. Again, just cubes. That's how simple it is. So what I'm aiming to show in some of these videos is how simple you can build something, but then how kind of cool you can make it look. So we're going to play it now. I want to go through a bit of a talking guide of what's going on. So as we come in, this is where I had the inspiration for the Thieves Guild, uh, pulling the chain to go inside the grave. So, in we go, and we can see already that it is illuminated. The floor does have a little bit of a reflection on it, reason being is because we can hear drips. I want to give the impression that the floor is a bit wet, there are puddles here, there and everywhere, because there's water dripping down. So there was the bang for the skeleton, the door now opens and you can see our monster there, but in the video he isn't. He appears now. 
And he's got us. And that's how it ends. So you can see the process of what I'm doing. I could have added more to this scene. I, I really could have added more to it. But I felt, um, I think I spent about five hours on this in total. So ultimately, I think five hours work for what's presented is fairly decent when you consider how uh, some games are made. And you could literally make a game in five hours, but I wouldn't recommend it simply because you'd end up with a pretty boring game with just rushed results. So lastly, I'm going to quickly go into Visual Studio and I'm going to show you the uh, sequence that occurred via the C-sharp coding because obviously, just like the others, everything we've done here, it was all done in a sequence which the C-sharp script handled and is known as sequence holder. So we can see it's just a case, much like last time, declaring all the variables I would need, starting the coroutine, and then running that coroutine. So obviously the first bit was always the black screen with the text that fades in, and then just playing all the animations, playing all the sounds, and then just ending it. So for all of that, that is the only scripting that really needed to occur, just that sequencing. And I kind of like this one a little bit because um, I feel I can design, or rather I have more freedom to design kind of horror, hauntingly style things a little bit more because you are not as restricted as you would be if you were creating an open world. So guys, that's how that uh, Unity short was made. Stick around on my channel if you want to see some more of them. Uh, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon. You can stay up to date with everything that I have on this channel. Guys, thank you very much for watching.